uh, this call will be about uh, how to scale uh, a conferencing system that is based on a pure SIP uh, so uh, you can blend it uh, into your uh, existing infrastructure with uh, uh, proxies, uh, with balancers, etc. etc. So, uh, a little uh, explanation of uh, what I do, uh, what I've done. Uh, I wrote uh, together with uh, Tony uh, all the various book uh, about free switch, uh, so the uh, the cookbook uh, and uh, uh, the mastering and free switch 1.8. And uh, by the way, the 1.8 has been just released yesterday, uh, the new free switch version, and the book cover both 1.8 and 1.6 because 1.8 and 1.6 are totally compatible one each other and uh, 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 1.8 is much more powerful as you will discover but uh, uh, the book cover exactly uh, all the parts that are common between 1.6 and 1.8. Uh, I'm uh, a consultant, uh, principal of my own company, and uh, I'm working with uh, internet communication since '94. Uh, so be before it was uh, the web, uh, and uh, yes, I feel a little bit an old pony. And I do uh, mainly uh, industrial grade uh, uh, operations, uh, so uh, all that has to do uh, uh, with uh, uh, availability, scalability, uh, resilience, uh, distribution, uh, and uh, let's say critical or big uh, uh, system and installations. Agenda. Uh, we will touch all these points. Uh, we will. Uh, I will try to be fast because. Uh, uh, all other my presentation normally has no time to complete and uh, uh, so without much ado uh, let's see what we are want to reach so a complete uh, uh, video conferencing system with all the bell and whistles that uh, we are used to so uh, if you have an idea uh, about uh, uh, Virtual Communicator or uh, the weekly uh, Klucon Conf, uh, uh, we want to reach uh, the same kind of features, uh, but uh, uh, having all of that uh, in uh, uh, pure SIP. And uh, uh, this because in this way we can uh, uh, mix and match all kind of uh, uh, clients, so uh, from uh, uh, legacy uh, video, uh, like uh, Tandberg, uh, and uh, you know <laughs> what I'm uh, speaking about, and uh, uh, going uh, to the latest uh, and brightest uh, WebRTC uh, through SIPJS uh, and uh, uh, through all the um, clients that are out there for SIP on uh, WebRTC. And with uh, uh, all the controls that uh, uh, give the moderator all the power of a, a movie director. So choose who is on screen, who get uh, uh, to be on floor, uh, change uh, what is the uh, layout of the screen, uh, put a caption uh, on you. So uh, is written, I am Giovanni Maruzzelli, I am the CEO of that company. Uh, and uh, uh, all these uh, kind of things. But uh, we know that uh, SIP has got uh, uh, video calls uh, since forever, more or less. Uh, uh, video is just a second uh, media stream uh, into the SDP. Uh, so uh, that uh, has been uh, demonstrated almost uh, uh, immediately after the first voice calls uh, at the time of uh, UC me and uh, those kind of software. But what we want is not just a video call, we want a, a conferencing system with uh, uh, all the capabilities uh, for collaboration. So for example, a chat system and a, a user management uh, um, environment. Enter free switch. What is free switch? Free switch is the most powerful tool set you can find around about all that is uh, media uh, management uh, for uh, 
real-time communication. So uh, don't think at it uh, as a PBX, uh, don't think at it uh, as a voice tool. Here is a complete media tool set. So you can do whatever you uh, slice, dice, uh, and make cubes uh, uh, with the video, with audio, and uh, uh, in the future uh, with uh, uh, all the 3D things that uh, yesterday we were talking about when we were touching the uh, web virtual reality. Uh, FreeSwitch has, uh, uh, as you know, all capability to transcode, uh, to mix, uh, and uh, uh, to do conferencing in the right way. So. Uh, you have uh, with FreeSwitch two kind of way uh, to manage a conference. One that is a very low CPU uh, usage. We will see that there's uh, a pass through or uh, just transcode. And the other one that is a high CPU but computer graphic capable, that is uh, uh, the MCU. Uh, way to do conf uh, video conferencing. The MCU is like uh, you have uh, a video game console and you are able uh, to uh, actively um, composite uh, your screen and do things uh, on your screen like uh, uh, you were at a console of computer graphics animation. And uh, uh, this is uh, the opposite of the pass-through or transcode mode where uh, you uh, do not touch the screen, but uh, you just move uh, packets back and forth and maybe uh, you transcode. And transcoding, we will see, is very important because uh, there are certain clients that only support the VP8 video codec and certain clients, notably uh, Apple clients, that only support uh, H.264 and also some uh, uh, of the legacy clients, for example, the Tandberg 2 and the Polycoms, uh, the old ones, uh, only support H.264. So it's important to, to be able uh, to transcode between uh, those two video uh, codecs. And uh, uh, what we need, uh, we need uh, all the uh, capability that uh, FreeSwitch give to us. So not only the capability of uh, uh, using and treating the medias, but also uh, the uh, security, uh, the uh, AAA, uh, so authorization, uh, access control, etc., and the uh, uh, capability of uh, uh, doing uh, outbound call so you, we can invite someone uh, to join our conference. <clears throat> the important thing is that uh, we can base all that uh, on SIP. So uh, we can uh, reuse 20 years of capabilities of building infrastructure, of building resilient uh, services and uh, using uh, the building blocks uh, that uh, we know very well. So OpenCPS Open as a proxy or a, a Camaleo and uh, SIP Simple as uh, an, uh, the carrier of uh, uh, chat messages that goes back and forth. But also we will see, we will use a SIP uh, Simple, so the messaging of SIP, uh, also to carry back and forth the uh, commands. So for example, I want to kick one uh, uh, out uh, from the conference or I want to mute uh, uh, someone that has noise in his phone, I will send uh, a, a simple SIP message that will be routed uh, through our uh, standard infrastructure causes uh, SIP, and uh, uh, this will be converted uh, to a command that will be given uh, to the conference and uh, will mute that uh, uh, specific uh, microphone. And uh, uh, we will use uh, FreeSwitch as a back-to-back -back user agent, and uh, uh, we will use uh, uh, the SIPJS as uh, uh, the um, WebRTC uh, JavaScript component uh, around which uh, we will uh, write our clients. But uh, we know that uh, there are many other uh, implementation, open source and closed source, uh, 
to build uh, WebRTC clients uh, uh, that uh, are speaking SIPs. On top of this, uh, what uh, we bring uh, uh, more, uh, we will use Cordova, uh, that is uh, uh, um, open source uh, uh, framework to convert our uh, web uh, uh, page that uh, uh, you access from uh, a normal PC, uh, you convert this uh, uh, web page uh, to a uh, real native app that will run uh, both on uh, Android and on iOS, also on iPhones. <clears throat> and uh, also the same uh, is very important uh, when uh, uh, you distribute uh, applications uh, to your uh, smartphone users that you keep uh, the usage of battery very low because uh, people will hate you if your app uh, is consuming and is draining uh, their batteries. So we will uh, put uh, all our fee fit into uh, Google FCM, that is the Google push, the server push. So what happens is the application will be completely shut down. I mean, it will, it will not run at all, but when we want to wake it up, when we want to to send a call uh, to the smartphone when we want to push that call to the smartphone, what will happen is that we will send a signal to Google, Google will send a signal to the smartphone and the smartphone will wake up or uh, the application if it's not already uh, working. And this way means that our application uh, will uh, drain zero battery because it will not monitor nothing. It's just the smartphone that will call the application if the smartphone receives uh, a push uh, from Google. That is exactly the same as with uh, the uh, latest smartest app. This is uh, the uh, architecture and uh, we will see that uh, from one side we have uh, uh, all kind of uh, clients. Uh, they can be smartphone, they can be uh, web pages, uh, they can be uh, desk phones, etc. All of them arrive to our uh, front end. Our front end is a replicated um, uh, uh, proxy with uh, uh, RTP engine. We will see what is the usage of RTP engine in this architecture is a, is a very important usage. Then uh, after this front end uh, that uh, will gather and will uh, expose the minimum possible area of the attack to the internet so it's very secure and very uh, confined, then uh, we have our uh, farm of uh, free switches on the back and then uh, uh, all the infrastructure that support that farm. So uh, clustered uh, um, database, file system, etc. OpenCPS, uh, the uh, proxy, the C proxy will work uh, in uh, active passive, uh, in a high availability active passive and uh, with the uh, uh, standard uh, uh, WebRTC configuration. So uh, we will use uh, RTP engine to bridge from outside to inside uh, the, the media streams. So both the video and the audio streams. But uh, what is uh, uh, the interesting thing is that uh, through our uh, proxy, we will uh, make RTP engine to translate it all. So from in, uh, in uh, outside world, uh, all the calls uh, will go around encrypted with DTLS, uh, with SRTP, and uh, uh, practically uh, you can't debug, monitor, understand nothing because all is encrypted. What we do is that uh, because we are a conferencing system, so at the end of the day, we, we must mix 
uh, the strings, so we will decode those strings. So instead of decoding uh, inside into uh, free switch, we decode outside, we decode on the uh, RTP itself. So inside, we will have only the simple RTP streams that we're used to, and also the signaling will be the normal UDP non-encrypted signaling. So all this will be very easy to uh, debug, monitor, and manage by at large. We will use FreeSwitch in his most powerful capabilities of dealing with uh, uh, standard, uh, very uh, traditional uh, media streams and uh, signaling uh, uh, messages. This is again the uh, same picture as before, just uh, uh, to let you remember what is the uh, role of RTP engine in the middle. Uh, RTP engine will translate all that is encrypted into something that is not encrypted and will be passed to the farm that is inside. So for easy of management and debugging of our applications. <clears throat> the important thing is that uh, obviously we need to keep uh, all users of a conference on the same box. That's why, that's because we need to uh, mix, uh, to do a real mixing of the streams and then distribute. So what, uh, uh, what we do is uh, uh, what uh, uh, you are used to do for all these kind of services. It can be queues, it can be uh, call centers, it can be conferences, but uh, uh, also is important when uh, then uh, you must manage, for example, attended transfer, uh, refer, and all the intricacies uh, of uh, uh, SIP call management. So you want to uh, that, that the same destination st uh, stay on the same box, and you can do that uh, um, <coughs> in uh, using uh, the appropriate function on the uh, proxy. And uh, uh, as is uh, described here, um, so while a call is up uh, to a specific destination, if another call comes for that destination, it can be one user, it can be uh, a conference, it can be whatever, an extension, we will uh, send it to the same uh, physical box. So it will be easy then to uh, manage uh, and uh, etc. Um, free switch, how to configure? Uh, obviously, uh, you must use uh, uh, our uh, front end uh, as uh, outbound C proxy. Uh, you accept uh, all the calls uh, that are coming from uh, uh, the front end as uh, uh, already uh, authorized, so you blindly accept them. And uh, uh, you choose the kind of conferencing that is more suited uh, to uh, to your uh, uh, use case. So you can have uh, uh, the most uh, uh, computer graphic uh, but uh, uh, CPU intensive mode or uh, you can have uh, the lightest possible mode that is just moving packets back and forth. <clears throat> The other imp very important uh, feature in this uh, uh, kind of application is the chat plan. So uh, FreeSwitch do not have only a dial plan where you understand uh, uh, what to do with an incoming call, but it has also a chat plan. A chat plan uh, get as input uh, uh, a simple message, in this case, uh, uh, a chat message, and uh, uh, then we'll apply the same kind of regular expression as in the dial plan to understand what to do with this uh, uh, simple message, with this uh, uh, chat message. Uh, in our case, uh, uh, those chat messages uh, can be or chat messages that are uh, text messages for another user 
or they can be interpreted as uh, command uh, for the uh, conference management itself. And uh, using that chat plan, uh, we can then uh, interact with all the uh, commands that FreeSwitch expose. So uh, we can uh, manage our conference, but we can also give back feedback to uh, our uh, GUIs, to our application. So for example, uh, we will see that uh, we we will have uh, on the um, on the uh, client uh, um, the indication of uh, who is talking. This will change in real time. So uh, this is very useful uh, when you are following. Uh, a, a, a conference and uh, uh, then uh, you see someone that you don't don't know and uh, uh, that is uh, uh, speaking <clears throat> uh, we can accept uh, in this uh, kind of conference the uh, most uh, uh, various uh, uh, clients uh, and uh, uh, they only need to be uh, uh, SIP compatible so uh, we don't uh, uh, need the specific uh, things uh, uh, to be owned or used by our uh, users. Uh, and uh, then we have the um, push uh, services. Push services has uh, this important aspect of uh, um, making uh, uh, um, the application on the smartphone uh, not using, uh, not draining the batteries, and uh, is also nice as an alert uh, to um, as an alert to wake up uh, the user. Because usually, when there is a push uh, services, uh, the phone will also give an alert uh, to the user. And uh, how, how much time I have uh, again? More? Two hours. Cool! <laughs> four minutes. So four minutes, uh, uh, I will not do the demo, but I have the... Uh, I will show the demo and then uh, I will do maybe a demo. James, uh, maybe I, I can uh, apply. Okay, in the Dangerous demo, I will do the demo live, but uh, uh, let's see it uh, very fast. Uh, this is uh, the uh, uh, web, uh, uh, the, this is the website, let's say, and uh, uh, you just put uh, your name and surname, then uh, you click uh, call and uh, you are connected to the uh, web conference. Uh, you have the basic controls uh, on the back and uh, the chat windows and uh, you can uh, write your message and uh, we'll go in the chat windows and uh, if you click on controls uh, it will open uh, a, a little view of yourself and uh, all the, uh, the kind of controls that uh, you use uh, for managing the conference, so for choosing the layout, uh, for kicking out people, uh, for muting, uh, for giving the floor, uh, and all the things uh, that uh, uh, you're used uh, in conferencing. Also, you can see that uh, it appears an indication uh, between the two uh, video streams uh, of uh, who is uh, uh, talking, and it will appear and disappear if uh, uh, someone is talking. This is uh, the app, and uh, the app is derived uh, through Cordova but, uh, from that uh, uh, same uh, web page, so it uh, looks uh, and works uh, uh, more or less the same, but uh, it has some uh, hidden things like he writes uh, his own data into uh, the database of the smartphone, so he, he can recall uh, to the same things, uh, to the same numbers. He keeps uh, your passwords, uh, and uh, or and uh, it is integrated uh, into the push system. <clears throat> 
So that's the same thing with uh, who is talking, uh, controls, uh, uh, full screen, etc. This is when you explode the controls and see the two um, web stream, uh, video streams, yourself and the remote one. This is when uh, uh, the two uh, the app and the web page are uh, chatting one each other. And uh, now I, I shut down uh, the uh, application. So the application is not running at all and uh, uh, not using the uh, batteries, but I send a call from uh, uh, the web page uh, and uh, a push notification is sent from uh, Google. A push notification appears on the uh, cell phone and uh, you see uh, on the top left uh, uh, a little icon that is also uh, the push notification and uh, uh, you click on the push notification you, uh, you also hear a noise and uh, it starts and it connects uh, to the uh, conference. So uh, demo actual uh, will be uh, during dangerous demo and uh, uh, I will put again this one, but uh, if someone wants to use uh, this is uh, uh, the link uh, uh, to the demo, at least uh, to the um, web page demo. <sighs> Questions? Uh, it's, uh, it's finished now. Chat. Because because uh, uh, my intention was uh, to uh, reuse uh, for uh, what is possible uh, a SIP uh, uh, infrastructure so I can uh, uh, scale it with uh, traditional systems uh, like uh, RTP engine, like uh, uh, SIP proxies, uh, etc. And uh, reuse uh, all the legacy systems uh, and all the uh, competence uh, that is uh, about SIP. Uh, this is uh, uh, toward, uh, uh, let's say, uh, more uh, uh, traditional conservative uh, uh, user like carriers uh, and uh, ITSPs, uh, etc. And uh, uh, the, uh, the features are uh, more or less the same that uh, you can have uh, uh, with Verto. Uh, it's just that Verto is much more um, familiar uh, uh, for uh, um, web developers and, uh, and, and this is uh, more familiar for, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, telcos uh, and uh, ITSP. But uh, if, uh, if you use the same things uh, uh, with uh, Verto instead of uh, uh, with the SIP, uh, it works the same. Also Verto send the chat messages so you can reuse the chat plan, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, at the end of the day, always there is a free switch and these features on the back. Is uh, it can be vert, it can be zip. Is other question, please. But the, the, there will be the, uh, the, the real demo we will do uh, in Dangerous Demo. Then uh, I will uh, put the, the link again and we all uh, will try to connect and uh, we, we will make uh, my home server burn. <laughs> Please. Uh, in, in what do you mean? Uh, no, uh, Cordova is, uh, Cordova, I don't know. Uh, not exactly, or at least it's not the way that I used it. I, I can explain that. Um, I, I first, uh, I, I made the, um, the, uh, uh, the web client, uh, the, the web page, that is a normal web page, and uh, that, that do things with uh, the JavaScript of uh, SIPJS. Then I, I gave uh, uh, that page to Cordova, and Cordova built uh, the application. That's it. 
and it's the same code. Uh, it's just that uh, the the things, uh, the special things for Cordova are not used uh, when uh, you go with a browser. But it's the same code, same same stuff. Cordova is just, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a black box uh, that uh, takes uh, the uh, takes uh, HTML and JavaScript uh, and output a comp uh, or uh, uh, already compiled. Uh, native application. I mean, they're, they're kind of genius. I, I don't know how, how they can be so smart, but it works. Order. Any other questions for Giovanni? All right, well, thank you, Giovanni. Big round of applause. Thank you, up to you.